Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm the T-Max. I make videos about travel, language, and culture. And I have been in Brazil six, six whole weeks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's been amazing. I've had a great time. I've spent the whole time here in Sao Paulo learning Portuguese, uh, just doing stuff around the city. And I just want to give you guys a quick update on what's been happening. I still don't have my CPF and this is a huge mistake um, if you're somebody like me who is used to shopping online or who wants to order food you know through a delivery service or even get a sales price at a store you need a CPF you need it for everything so if you're planning to be in Brazil for two weeks or more get your CPF before coming here just it's something you can do online just follow the instructions but actually follow through and do it all it seems a bit tedious but it's not that hard once you know the exact process. If you guys want to know exactly what the process is, leave a comment below, let me know, and maybe I'll do a short that outlines the exact process. It's not that difficult. Get your CPF. It sucks not having a CPF here. I finally did the CPF process. Now I'm just waiting to receive it, but yeah, just do it before. And I was planning to do my digital nomad visa while here, and I thought it would be easier to do it in country but I'm finding out as somebody from the US, it's harder, not because of Brazil, but because of the US. Um, Brazil requires that all the documents are apostilled, which means like officialized, even though the documents, if they're coming from a federal source, should be official, but this makes them official in other countries. And so I need a birth certificate and my FBI background check, which are super easy to get when you're at home, when you're in the States. Trying to get that stuff from here is a headache. Like you're, you know, you're trying to order it. Mail delivery service is expensive. Um, then to get the stuff verified, that stuff is expensive and it's all super time consuming. Uh, when I did my visa for China years ago, the process seemed a lot more straightforward, but again, I was in the US, so maybe that's what it was. Agencies here offer to help and they're like starting at $1,000, going up to 1500 for their help. This is not including all the payments you have to pay. I'm looking at two, three thousand dollars US just to get this digital nomad visa from here. And also you need every document translated and it has to be translated officially. The prices just keep adding up. If I did it from the States, I'd cut out that middleman and I'd spend maybe a thousand dollars. Now I understand why people, when you go travel abroad and they're like, oh, you're a foreigner, you must be rich. Cause it feels like you gotta be rich just to get the darn visa to stay here. But I digress. I'm having a great time and uh, I even started a train with T-Max here in Sao Paulo and so far it's going pretty good. We're having fun. We have a WhatsApp group so you know that means we're really official now. If you're in the area and you want to do some workouts come look us up or send me a message in the comments below and I'll connect you with the group and you can come work out with us. So that's the quick update. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the video. How much Portuguese have I learned after taking five weeks of class at Aprenda Dois? So earlier this year when I was traveling around South America, when I'd meet Brazilians and their Spanish wasn't strong, they'd say they speak Portuñol. And as somebody who speaks Spanish first and now learning Portuguese, I feel like I'm speaking Espanguez. Can we make that catch on? Hmm? Hashtag Espanguez. And so this is why I keep making Spanish errors in Portuguese. For example, I keep saying cada dia instead of Torogia. I say mira instead of olia or veja. I say creo que instead of acho que. And then also when I'm writing, I might spell words like actividades con C, practica with a C, doctor <laughs> with a C. It's just they're so close. But in general, I am slipping less into Spanish than I did when I first started learning Portuguese. Living in the hostel has really helped me accelerate um, my learning. Uh, the learning process is going way faster, I think, than if I lived in an Airbnb or if I lived with English speakers or Spanish speakers even. And because I'm exposed to so many different sotaki every day, I'm forced to really expand my ability to listen. And hopefully this is making me better at the language and a better listener. Sometimes I do find it hard to switch from Spanish to Portuguese. If I'm talking Spanish to someone, I can't just switch to Portuguese. But if I'm speaking French or Mandarin, I can speak that language and then easily switch to another. Hey, that's no, okay, come on. <laughs> After being in country for six weeks, it is official that my Portuguese is stronger than my Italian, which wasn't that strong to begin with. An interesting thing that I find here is that they use 
teaspoon or cups when they're talking about recipes, but everything else is metric. I just thought it was strange. I'm looking for like, how many grams do I need to put in this thing? And it's like, oh no, uma shikara or um koyer jicha. I'm like, whoa, that's a, a literally a teaspoon and literally a cup. And it's based on an American cup is what they call it, is the, the shikara. It's a, a glass cup that we don't use in the States that are very popular here that they call American cup. Did you know that in Brazil, cats only have seven lives? as opposed to the nine that they have in the US. So you probably will see a mass exodus of cats to the US after they watch this video, so they can have two more lives. I recently found out that the D.A.R.E. program, the drug and alcohol resistance education program that we have in the US that I grew up with, exists here in Brazil as well. They call it Proergy, um, and this is what it stands for because I don't remember. They have a song and everything and the line is the same and it's just really uh, interesting when you see things that transcend cultures. So there's an expression I like, com licença, and this literally means with license, <laughs> and it's how they say excuse me here. So if you want to pass by somebody, you say com licença. Oh, Portuguese, <laughs> always wants to be different, huh? No, I'm kidding. But I did find some examples when Portuguese is the only language that is different from the other languages. So when you're talking about the length of something, in French it's longueur, Spanish longitude, Italian lunghezza, and in Portuguese comprimento. The word beast in French is bet, in Spanish, bestia, Italian, bestia, and in Portuguese, fera. If you want to lie in a hammock, or amac in French, amaca in Spanish, amaca in Italiano, or hedgy in Portuguese. And because my level is getting better, I'm starting to learn a lot more interesting words and phrases. Let's take a look at some of those. Iato is a word that separates all the different sounds of the vowels, even if they're next to each other. For example, the word iato, <laughs> iato, all the vowels have their own sounds, they're all separated, versus like Paraguay. The guai is the U-A-I is just one sound, so that's not iato. Encher o saco literally is to inflate the sack, but you can use this when someone is being irritating. Masa do amor is an apple of love, <laughs> but it's actually candied apple. Emenda de feriado, it literally means a stitched holiday but this is the word they use for four-day weekends. Joda giganchi, like a giant wheel is what it translates to, and this is what they call a ferris wheel. Sheese, no, not cheese, sheese. This is actually the letter X in Portuguese, and whenever you go to a restaurant, you'll see in the menu next to the word burger, you just see an X for cheese burger. Boca de siri, this is the mouth of a siri crab, which are small blue crabs. And someone who doesn't share secrets would have boca de siri. Café de manhã versus café da manhã. One is a coffee in the morning and the other one is breakfast. So, amanhã para café da manhã, de manhã tomo uma café de manhã. Guarda-chuva and guarda-sol literally mean keep the rain or keep the sun. So this is umbrella and a parasol, or sun umbrella, or sumbrella? Do we say that in English? O sujo falando do mal lavado. This literally means the dirt talking about the unclean. <laughs> and this expression is what we'd say in English, the pot calling the kettle black. Bacana. This is a very popular word that all the hip and cool people use, and it means cool, nice, or interesting. The T-Max é muito bacana. Ta. So this is like the Swiss army knife of responses. It stands for esta, which means it is. He is, or she is, or you are. I mean, like any question they ask, you can just respond ta. Fique Barbie na caixa. And so at first I thought it was like to preserve something because it means to stay like a Barbie in the box. So, you know, like preserved, well preserved, actually means shocked, like a Barbie in a box. I don't buy Barbies, but I hope they don't look like that. That's kind of scary. Fazer cirurgia, or fazer massagem, to do surgery or to do a massage. This is what both the doctor and the patient would say. So the person that's getting surgery is doing surgery, and the person getting a massage is also doing the massage. Cachorro de rua versus cachorro da rua. So cachorro de rua is like a stray, I'm, you know, I'm a, a hound or a mutt, some dog that's on the street. Cachorro da rua is also a street dog, but the whole community takes care of this dog. So basically it's like the neighborhood dog, the neighborhood pet. Beja flor, flower kisser is what it translates to, but this is a hummingbird. Dar pepino, literally to give a cucumber, but it means to be in a pickle. Bi, 
Literally, this means and then, and it can be used that, especially if you're writing. In a book, you'll see EI, and it means and then. But when people say it on the street to each other, it literally just means what's up. Omem galinha, man chicken or chicken man. I thought it was going to be a coward, but it actually is more like a rooster in a hen house type of chicken man. So basically a womanizer. And I heard this expression in the store, uh, SG Ginero da, am I giving you enough money? And instead of saying seem, which is yes, they responded da. So they used that same verb, which immediately took me back to Chinese because in Chinese there, you can't say yes for a question with the verb. You just repeat that verb back if it's yes. And I was like, whoa, where am I? Okay, I'm in Brazil, not China. Or am I in China? No, I'm in Brazil. Yeah, we've made it to false friends because that list is just never going to end. Let's start with English this time. Cigarro. When I read it, I thought it was a cigar. So it looks like cigar, but it's actually cigarette. Cigar is charuto. Parenchi are not your parents. They are your relatives. If you want to say parent, it's opai, which is also dad. So if you want to say parents, it's ospais. Esquisito. My first thought was exquisite. No, it means weird. <laughs> if you want to say exquisite, it's hey quintado. Alias is not your alias. It's actually just means by the way. If you want to say alias, it's pseudonomio. So the next few, if you see them written, there's no confusion. But when you hear them, you're like, whoa, what? Happy. I'm thinking like happy. <laughs> it actually is rap. That's how they say rap. If you want to say happy, it's feliz. Hancho. It literally means ranch, not like the big boss. If you want to say that, it's chefon. Creamy. If you read it, very clearly it's crime. But if you want to say creamy, that's actually cremoso. So let's switch over to the Spanish false friends. Hecado, which when you read it, looks like recado, which is an errand. But it's not that, it's a message. If you want to say errand, it's incumbencia. Also, it's not a bear, it's actually a bone. If you want to say bear, it's urso. Canela is cinnamon. But it's also your shin, your shin bone. So when you read cajino, it looks like cariño, which would be deer. But cajino is actually like a small cart. <laughs> if you want to say cariño, it's querido. Ordenado is not clean. It's actually an old word for salary. If you want to say clean, it's limpo. Lavabo is not a sink. It's actually the toilet. If you want to say sink, it's pia, which is strange because you pia in the toilet, not in the sink. I don't know where the, the Brazilians pia. Vaso is not a cup, it's a pot. If you want to say cup, it's copo. So that has been six weeks of knowledge and information in Portuguese. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty fluent. Like, I'm like at least baby fluent. So I pretty much speak better than every six year old here. Um, maybe some seven year olds, uh, I'm getting pretty good. So maybe each week will be a year. So after, you know, 25 weeks, I'll speak like an adult, which would be awesome actually. So thanks for joining me on this journey. If you have questions, comments, um, suggestions, anything like that, feel free to leave comments below. Remember to subscribe, remember to like and share. And I appreciate you joining me on this journey. Hopefully I have a video in the future about how I got my digital nomad visa and how I didn't give up because the process was so difficult. Um, but you may see that other version of that video too. Mm. We'll see. Wish me luck. See you guys in the next one.